Hi, my name is uh, Fred McCormick. I'm a systems engineer at Digital Design here in Las Vegas. Um, we put together a routine to uh, take a regular Unibasic file and dump it to an XML format. So it's basically will be a point and click uh, conversion to an Excel file. Um, in today's world, it's kind of a requirement, <clears throat> and the need far outweighed <laughs> waiting for it. So we went ahead and developed it ourselves, uh, and I'm just kind of passing it along to you. So basically, um, we're going to take a customer file. And I'll give you a quick show here. Uh, we're going to take a customer file. If I do a question mark, W E L. Oops, W E L. And we'll just pick any customer here. Let's do uh, do Wells Dairy, I guess. Okay, and it shows basically all the information within a customer file: phone numbers, fax numbers, um, date of last sale, date of last invoice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And one thing we kind of did that was uh, unique was just putting windows within a, a a system so that you can look up anything. And we do an X to do a reverse sequential. <laughs> anyway, so let's get down to the program at hand here. We created a program that uh, mz.excel.001. And the intention of this program is to, <clears throat> this is a program that you would uh, take one of your reports that you normally do. And when the user inputs the from and to date range, from and to customer, specific salesman, et cetera, et cetera, you take that information and store it to a temporary file. And then this program, to read that temporary file, take your from and to date ranges and filter it down. And the reason we I'm saying this is this program works perfect and you know Excel filters just like a report generator but it has a maximum of 25,000 records. <clears throat> so that being said you have to keep your your number count under that. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of what needs to take place to make this work on your Unibasic files. So basically the first part of this program is all standard. You don't have to touch anything. Um, here we have, here's your output file. This needs to be modified to whatever you want it to say. Um, and it just is basically a text file and then now we're describing your company data files in this routine here so we're telling it we're telling the Excel program what your files look like and how we would normally read everything into D dollar sign the very first column here is how you were going to dimension that in this case D dollar sign in our system is 2048 records big. Not records, characters. <clears throat> and then start your numeric buckets. D2 will have 28 numeric buckets. D3 will have 28 numer numeric buckets. D4 and D5. And then here we're saying uh, the byte displacement that you, your read statements. So you know how you read your string and then you're reading D2. Um, we could have had it calculate that, but sometimes people do things out of the ordinary. And rather than make that a problem, we just figured, you know what, put in your own specs, it all works. Further down in the program, it all reads this information and it knows how to read your data files. If you leave it with a zero, because your file, let's say you're only using D dollar sign and D2. The rest of these would all be zero and the read statements down below uh, and I'm saying only these first two columns they would all be zero. The read statements down below will then say oh well they're zero don't execute them. Okay um, we've set up for four files. D dollar sign is the main detail uh, then there's a G dollar sign 
for your first cross lookup, an M dollar sign for your second cross lookup, and an N dollar sign for your uh, third cross lookup. Okay, and here's where the magic happens. Um, there are 12 different data types, and basically, a little bit further down here, we are describing the headings of an Excel spreadsheet. And the way that it works is the first field within this data statement is your column heading. The next position is the width you want that column to be. And the third is, in this case, that's a string data. Uh, your phone number is a, a 2. And it will use the proper mask. And basically, further down in the program, it's saying um, how to mask all this data. You don't need to bother be bothered with that. All you have to do is dimension your files, which I've shown you already. You design your column headings and, and give it the column types. Put them in these data statements. And then we have, um, as you can see, that's quite large. We have the ability to do filtering. Um, I rem this out, but basically there are six variables, Q1 through Q6. And remember, as you read from your program where you have uh, wrote to a temporary file, you assign the values to Q1 through Q6 if you need to at all. Uh, and the way that this works is, in this example, I'm given specific salesman number of 999. I rimmed it out, of course. Within the record, it's position 106 and three characters long. That's all you need to do. You you give Q1 dollar or sign a value, and you're saying, where do we want to match it on the record? And the system does the rest. <clears throat> The, the routine is also set up that is if it was a minus 999, it would get everything but salesman 999. So 999 means specific. A minus 999 means everything but. Okay, now we're getting down to the main logic of this system. Uh, first thing we want to do is uh, right here, we're only reading the main detail. In this case, it's the customer file. And in every customer file, you have a salesman. So we store the salesman number, but we need to go look up the customer name. We need to look up the general ledger number. And in our case, we, we sometimes have a post to, uh, an example would be something like, Kentucky Fried Chicken has probably 2,000 stores nationwide but all their bills get set to one corporate office and so we're opening that same customer file again your files you describe it just the way you need to but basically we're just cross-linking and looking up the names and you can see the variables uh, as an example the salesman number um, remember the main file is D dollar sign then you have G dollar sign M dollar sign and N dollar sign that's where it's storing the information. And again, these are all your routines for filtering. <clears throat> Remember we said using starting byte displacement, we're getting that from T1. That was where we were asking those questions. Q1 dollar sign and T1. T1 was your uh, where it is on the record. Everything else is automatic. You don't need to do anything. So if you do it up higher in the program, everything else is there. I'm just kind of showing you how it works. Um, okay, so here's our standard read statements. Remember, you dimensioned D dollar sign. You may only have D dollar sign and D2, but lots of companies have many, many different buckets there, and based on how you dimensioned it in the beginning is whether we read at all those lines but they're there, they're standardized, and they work every time. You never get the wrong byte displacement as long as you put it up right up top. There are four, it's set up for four different files. And 
last but not least, we are building the Excel record. So what we've done so far is we've dimensioned the files in the beginning of the program. Then we've created column headings and told it what type of column that is, whether it's a date field, string field, numeric, social security number, etc. <clears throat> then we've done our file linking and now we're down to this point. So D dollar sign was our main variable as you can see and then G dollar sign in this example was a salesman name. All you need to do to make it look at your files is you tell you just you're describing what your files look like here and you're dumping it into the value of I dollar sign and then you go sub and build a record. Because you've defined whether it was a string or a numeric based on the heading type up top, this is all you have to do. All the other handling is done in the way down in the program. You don't even need to look at it. It just works. And in this example, we've got quite a large uh, uh, Excel record here, if you will. I'm just going to scroll back just a tad. So we've got a, we've described everything about the Excel files. It's wide, if you will. And then beyond this point, everything else is this is what your XML is actually looking like. And we're just we took an Excel file, and broke it down, see how it needed to be structured, and that's how we made this work. The need was great to do this. Everybody's expecting Unibasic to do this. So I'm going to basically show you how it works. I'm going to run the program. This is an 11,000 record file, so I just typed in run. It'll be done in just a second. And as soon as it's done, we'll, what we're going to do is uh, we're running a on a Windows server using remote desktop, and behind that is a Linux server running Unibasic. So I'm going to minimize this. And this is an FTP window into, I'm going to delete this file here, into our uh, Unibasic server. And I'm going to bring this file that we just created. It's 25 megs big. I'm going to bring it up to the Windows system. Double click. And there it is. All 11,000 records. <clears throat> and if you look at it, uh, we had set our column widths, if you remember, on all, every one of these headings. And we're in this example, we're doing courier font. Let's go a little further to the right. You notice our mask for zip plus four is working fine. <coughs> we told it to do a zip plus four, even though not all of them are that way. And it tests to see if you put in um, <clears throat> five digits for a zip code or you put in the nine digit zip code. Phone number, <clears throat> this is purely a numeric bucket and because we told it it was a phone number it puts the parentheses around it automatically. Um, here you can see where we did our record linking <clears throat> and we said this is the salesman go find the salesman name and we brought it into the file Um, so we did salesman name, general ledger number, and we had, here's a, an example of a corporation, Penske headquarters, <clears throat> uh, and this was in an individual branch at, that's their corporate headquarters. So anyway, as you look at this, here's our date fields. They're all perfectly slashed. Um, we did put within the program, <clears throat> if a date field is zero, uh, Microsoft makes them as January 00, uh, 1900. So a little over 115 years. <clears throat> so we just made it January 1st of 1900. Uh, so try not to let it come as a zero. I'll give it something if you have to, but it doesn't have to. It'll, it'll still work. Um, we also did the Social Security mask percentage. Um, 
we did our percentage fields here and all the numeric fields they're all there now remember this file is huge so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on filtering here And now, let's just do a specific salesman. You can break it down this way. Oh, great. Let's try 110. There you go. <clears throat> so anyway, I mean, this is an 11,000 record file, large. So our plan is to go to every maintenance program and make it dump its file to an Excel spreadsheet just by typing an E instead of a Y to record. We just do an E and it'll dump it to an Excel spreadsheet. And then the next step is to go through all of our reports, match the headings of the reports, and have the option to either print it on paper or dump it to an Excel. It's relatively simple. Once it's done, uh, this is something that's in demand and we wanted to make sure that the Univasic community is healthy. And so if you can use this, by all means. Thank you for your time. Talk to you soon. Bye.